videos of, of, of rare sky phenomena, and I put together a video a slide presentation over six minutes long of some recent rare sky phenomena that have been sent in here in the last, I don't know, few days, few weeks. Got, got a lot of email, went through a lot of email here recently, so uh stick around for that you guys are going to see some alien skies we've got a comet update uh, look forward to that i got something going on over here hang on just a second guys hold on adjusting that adjusting that it looks like the hold on just a second what do we have going on here oh there we go hey what's up guys hop in sin there we go. I didn't think the, the chat was working for some reason. How's everybody doing on this Wednesday? It's kind of windy out here in Arizona. Um, in fact, it's supposed to be windy the next couple of days. Um, weather coming in off the Pacific. Have been ever since we've been transitioning to El Nino. Got a comment update I want to share with you guys. We're going to look at uh, some really cool stuff that people have sent in here recently. The, the, the sky looks almost unrecognizable look like we live in some sort of a a new alien world looking at comet McNaught from 2007 the comet that's headed towards the inner solar system 12p ponds brooks nobody really knows for sure how it's going to react when it makes its close approach to the sun on april the 8th but it's going to be on this same general highway in the sky McNaught came in from that angle that's where 12 p ponds brooks is coming in from this same angle right here that teal line you see right there well that's where 12 p ponds brooks is at right now as i do this video check it out so it could react something similar to what we just saw right there so april 8th could be a, a day uh, for the history books, I'm telling you, the tail's getting bigger as this thing gets closer, and the closer it's get, the closer it gets, the more it's going to start reacting to the solar wind. It's already doing uh, somersaults. Guys and gals are are recording this thing, doing what they're calling the yin yang type of, of behavior up in the the sky as it's diving towards the. Look at the spiral. They're seeing this thing spiral in the sky as it's jetting out volcanic activity and uh, uh this this thing is is wild let's just put it uh, mildly very wild 25 days 14 hours until the eclipse so looking forward to that and we will be doing a live stream somewhere in the path of totality here's a look at the tail from michael jagger one of the the, the best photo uh sky photo guys in the whole world Astro, what do you call it? astrophotographers? He is one of the best, if not the best. I mean, he's incredible. There's the tail, um, and this is a few days, actually about a month out. It's getting closer, and the closer it gets, the tail is only going to get longer, and the coma, the head of the comet, is only going to get bigger, like we just saw right here with McNaught. McNaught didn't look this big as it was basically diving down into the solar system. Not at all. It started to react like that when it got close to the sun. So right on, man. Should be a, a fascinating day. I've been working on multiple folders. Um, here, I'm going to show you guys three folders. And if you've sent in pictures or videos, they're probably in either this folder here. They're probably in this folder right here. Look at all these. And this doesn't even include what I've, I've got for today. I just put the todays together like an hour ago. They're not even in these folders. Here's three folders that I'm currently working on. So obviously it's going to be a few days to get these for presentation purposes, but I am working on it and I appreciate all the, the stuff that you guys send in. I really do. We're going to get right to the, the slideshow that I put together. I'm calling this Alien Skies because some of this stuff that you're going to see looks downright alien. I mean, it looks like we're on another world at times. The skies have really been putting on a show here lately. Byron, out of Mount Hood, looked up in, in his own words, he said he thought he was looking at the, the Starship Enterprise above Mount Hood. Get a load of that. It was like it came straight off the TV. Unbelievable. Great photo by Byron. This one here is very ominous. This cloud structure looks like it's literally sitting on the ground. It almost looks like it originated on the ground and is lifting up into the sky. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. Chris out of Druyville, check that out. 
unbelievable. Much like these here. Look like shark fins up in the sky. I've seen these before in the past, but never quite this defined. Are you kidding me? Chicago Mark sent in several photos of what looked like waves in the sky, shark uh, fins in the sky. Um, either way, he got out his camera and started recording, and I don't blame him. And these are very symmetrical. And these are natural, believe it or not. Those are natural, and they typically happen around bodies of water, along coastlines. Um, this one's probably near Lake Michigan, if I had to guess. It's obviously from the Chicago area. That's where Mark took the photos. But you normally see these down around the Gulf of Mexico, not in Chicago, but we'll take them, man. Great job. Excellent photos by Mark. Look at that. And that's... Um, unedited. That's how I received it from Mark. Our friend Mary Hall from Michigan noticed what looked like a heart from the International Space Station looking down, probably some sort of an, an island, uh, the outline of an island, probably the, the sandy beaches of some island somewhere on Earth, shaped like a heart. Jonathan out of Norman, Oklahoma. This here makes no sense. You can tell over here in the distance, there's no city lights over here. And a lot of times when we see unusual color in the nighttime sky that just looks totally out of place, like we're on some sort of a an off-world alien planet, like we're looking at here, basically, there's, a, there's an explanation for it. There's a greenhouse maybe off in the distance. Maybe there's city smog um, that's kind of maybe illuminating the sky because cloud conditions are just right. Not the case here. There's nothing over there. Where did that come from? And where was it going? <laughs> Some sort of a orange, weird orange haze just ha hanging around by itself above or near Norman, Oklahoma. It looks like it was on the out outskirts of town, but excellent observation. And I've got more like that. Very mysterious. And check this out. Look at this. Same, same location, Jonathan, Norman, Oklahoma. You can't make this stuff up, man. That's how I received the photo. Why is that one cloud, everything else is white or dark blue, dark black almost. It's nighttime. Why is it red, light pink? Sun's well below the horizon. What's causing it to glow? <laughs> I mean, wow. Here we go, another one. Eden out of McMinnville, Oregon. Check it out. Again, he said there wasn't anything out there and there was no reason for the sky to be glowing. And in fact... His own words in the email were, this thing was moving. He said it took about seven minutes to move through the sky, whatever it was. Very unique color, obviously quite large, or at least it appears to be large. It's taking up a, a, a fairly good portion of the skyline over there. And here's where it started to fade out. So that tells you that this wasn't a city creating the, the, the light anomaly off in the distance. That was something apparently in the sky. How weird is that? And that's where it faded out. Very cool. Great observations. I'm telling you, you guys do not miss a trick. And he also sent in this photo from the daytime sky, uh, just a fiery orange. And he pointed out that there's a, a couple of nuclear power plants up there in his area. Not that this would necessarily influence the skies to turn orange, but that's something that he did point out. Um, Love Guiding Light sent this in out of Stone Crest, Georgia. Again, a little difficult to explain what's going on here. Um, I've zoomed in on the left, original photos on the right. Obviously, we've got like a, a large roll cloud, some sort of shelf cloud uh, that <laughs> appears to be sitting on the ground. But what's going on above the cloud? And they're both uh, various shades of orange. I, I have no idea. I've never seen anything quite like this. Um, is it a cloud? Is it some sort of a craft? Here it is on the, on the left is the original. Um, I zoomed in on the right just to get a little better look at this thing. And you can see it's the same photo. I went right through the, the power lines there. What is going on over there? Unbelievable. I don't blame her for taking pictures. I would have too. It just looks totally out of place. It looks lost. It's like it's trying to join the rest of the orange clouds over here, light orange. And it's just kind of off by itself, whatever it may have been. There's a, a good view. And you can kind of tell it's moving. Look at the, the vapor it's leaving behind it, right? At least that's the impression I get. Almost looks like it may have been moving 
very slowly, or that's wind coming off the backside of it, moving from right to left. Uh, not quite sure. Uh, again, very mysterious, alien-looking skies, much like right here. Out of this world, man. And this is unedited. This is how I received it. Beth out of Sun City, Arizona. Are you serious right now? That is about as fiery orange as you can get. Again, unedited. This is how I received the photo, and these were taken uh, at sunset by Beth. Wow. Just incredible. You guys are going to see some incredible photos and video in this video presentation. I received this from Laura, who was in Las Vegas, Nevada, and shared this photo. Uh, here we go. I'm going to analyze this photo uh, the best I can. She obviously took a picture of this building over here, and this showed up in the picture. She didn't imply, she didn't say whether she saw this in the sky or not. It just showed up in the picture. Look at that. I mean, it literally looks like, and this is the, the, the banner that I used for the video because it's, it's interesting. It really and truly is. I don't know if we've got some sort of a light craft over here by the building. This very well could be, and here's the thing. And you guys that, that, that know me, you've heard me mention it a thousand times. Anytime that, that a photo is taken behind glass, it's always subject to light anomalies that can show up in the photo. You may not see it in the sky, but the, the, the camera is going to pick it up. And that could be, believe it or not, I'm not saying that's not something in the sky, but I'm saying this could be something in the very room that she's standing in where she took the picture from. Um, either way, it's a cool photo. It looks like some sort of a, a saucer-shaped craft over there by that tower, but I think it's a light in the room that she's standing in. Once again, glass and light, will 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 they're the ultimate tricksters, and I think that's just a trick of light. It just so happens to be round like a flying saucer. How about that? Uh, but I do think it's a trick of light. Like right here, we've got something going on here. Chester Thomas, uh, they went and stayed at the Crescent Moon Hotel in Arkansas. Chester is from Texas. And they went over there and just spent a night or two at the hotel. Um, they took photos when they were in the, looks like the hallway or something here. You can see what looks like a corridor. This showed up in their photos. He said they didn't see this. There looks like two. Um, again, this could be a trick of light, and then again, maybe it's not. I, I, I don't know. It, it looks, um, <laughs> it looked pretty solid, whatever it may be. One thing I will say over the years, uh, and I'm just keeping it real, guys. I, I always try to keep it real, um, you know, I, unless I'm just absolutely way off base. But sometimes these can be dust particles. If you're using a bright flash, not in every case, though. Not in every case. So I, I have to at least you know, mention that because dust particles will behave like that. You know what? And out of focus dust particles, especially, you can zoom in on Venus, not to get off topic too much, but I've seen Venus look like that because it was out of focus. So don't really know what's going on here because obviously I didn't take a picture. I wasn't there, uh, but he did say they didn't see this. It just showed up in the picture. So I'll leave it up to you guys to decide, but sometimes mysterious things do show up. Uh, orbs floating around rooms, and maybe that's one of them. But you can't rule out a, a, a dust a dust particle if you use a very bright flash. Um, Haley, Woodstock, Ontario. Check this out. She noticed some sort of a uh, flying machine way off in the distance. I mean, this thing was a long ways away from her location. She did a great job filming it, whatever it may have been, some sort of a very colorful Looks like it's tumbling in, in the sky um, up in Ontario. Again, it right there, you can kind of get an idea. And it was actually farther. I zoomed in because it was so far away. It looked like just a, a small point of light. It was that far away. And I don't know how she even saw it, to be honest with you. I was very heavily zoomed in on that object. Great observation. Roberto, not sure of the location. Um, it doesn't look like it's in the south because you don't see any palm trees. That's sometimes how I'll deduce where maybe... Uh, a location may or may not be if I don't uh, get a location in the email. I'll look for palm trees. If I see palm trees, I know it's somewhere in the subtropics or the southern United States. If I don't see palm trees, then I'll assume it's uh, above the 35 degree north latitude. So that's probably where that was at. Some sort of a rare looking opening in the sky. And he couldn't help but film it as he was driving down the road as it was too perfectly round. 
was like a big saucer in the sky that went through the clouds, wherever he was at. I think that's somewhere in the, the central plains. I'm not sure, but good observation, though, by Roberto, who took that video while driving down the road. Jeff and Carolyn, the Texas wildfires up in the, the, the Texas panhandle. This is the sky a few nights ago as the sun was setting through behind the wildfire smoke. Yet another fiery orange red sky, but this is being caused by the, the wildfire smoke. And the, the, the smoke was acting as a solar filter, so you can get decent shots of the, the sun. Actually, they got some sort of lines. I don't know if that's their camera. I noticed that on the other photo. Did you guys see the lines on that? I'm sure it's just the, the camera, but... Some every camera photos the sun differently and manages light differently. The apertures all manage light differently, but uh, the the clouds and, and wildfire smoke do make um, excellent solar filters. Um, if if they're not good for anything else, right there you can see almost see a sunspot there. And here it's kind of getting low and in, in behind some very thick smoke. Another photo unedited. It's the way I received it from Jake out of. Redstown, Wisconsin. About as pink as you can get. Almost looks like some sort of an alien sky on an alien world. How about that? Another fiery orange sky, Piedmont, South Carolina. And this was sent in by uh, Suzanne. This, yeah, Suzanne. This sky here is not being influenced by wildfire smoke and it's not being influenced by Sahara sand particulates yet. But they are on the way, just in case you guys haven't looked. I'll, I'll share that with you guys tomorrow. Yes, we're going to see another round of Sahara sand coming up this spring, late spring, and, and uh, then, of course, through the summer, and probably, unfortunately, all summer long. Uh, we'll talk about that later, though. Check this out. Video by, by Fabi out of northern New Jersey. Got the, again, a trick of light here. But the sun looks like it's split in half almost. And it's an optical illusion. I'm telling you, light is the ultimate trickster. And here's a prime example. You've got the sun behind a, a, a layer of clouds here that, that has a, a, a definite line. And you're going to see a line in the sky here in a minute that is quite profound, to say the least. But it's causing the light to split. And the upper half of the light still remains uh, circular on top. And then you can see the entire sun on the bottom. Uh, kind of bizarre. I don't, <laughs> I don't blame her for taking the video. I probably would have too. That just looks super weird. Here's another alien sky. I'm telling you, we've been all around the world. Now we're diving down into Australia. Alien sky showing up down here. Vicky out of Melbourne, Australia. This is unedited. How I received the photo from Vicky out of Melbourne. Is it Melbourne or Melbourne? I know I've asked you guys that before. I know some people pronounce it. Uh, with a silent R. I've always pronounced it uh, with the R, but um, I think they're both correct. I, I don't really know. Miss Jarvis out of Northern California. Big jumbo golden cloud. Big, uh, little, looks like a thunderhead. And then underneath it, one rainbow shaft, very thick rainbow shaft. Okay, here's this line in the sky that uh, is quite remarkable. It's very sharp, very crisp. Um, this is obviously a, a panoramic view of the sky. You really don't see any other clouds in the sky except what's going on right there above this like shopping plaza photo by Teresa um, out of Texas. Check out the, the edge on that line, but, but we're not done yet. We're going to add an arc into that. Check it, check it out. Look, how does this happen? You got a perfectly straight edge right there in the daytime sky. Looked like somebody drew that with a ruler or, or a large 2x4. And then, look at that arc. What in the world? Is that the outline of, of, of something up in the sky? I mean, how does that just appear? Very cool, whatever it was. Great observation by Teresa. Uh, 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 the great state of Texas. Good job. Great observation. Here's another view. See the arc right there? That is truly bizarre. It's almost like there's something up there influencing the, the water vapor. But what? <laughs> and it's pretty good size. You can't see anything, but you can see the outline of like the water vapors trying to tell us, hey, there's something up here. Check it out. And she sure enough did. Great photo by Teresa from Texas. Not quite sure where at in Texas. Here we go. Singapore. We have been all around the world and we're not quite done yet. 
Uh, Wilson shared these next photos you're going to see of what looked like another version of some sort of a futuristic craft in the daytime sky like Byron saw above Mount Hood. This was above Singapore. Look at how smooth that thing is. Compared to the rest of the clouds, it, it looks very smooth. It looks out of place. It just doesn't look like it belongs there. The other clouds are, are rough and tumble, you know, just like a cloud normally looks on, on any given day. And then you look up and you see that and you look twice. And in some cases, you get your camera out like Wilson did, like Byron did, and you start taking pictures. I've seen those from time to time. Every once in a while, we'll get photos of, of something like that that's loaded with color. That wasn't the case with this one. It was uh, solid white, light gray, but either way, very cool. Ocala, Florida, more of these um, holes in the sky, hole punch clouds, whatever you want to call them. A video here sent in by Ted. Uh, who noticed these uh, a few days ago. And these are a little more random. The ones that we saw back in, there's a, an arc up in the sky, but this one here, you can tell what it is. I mean, that's obviously a, a partial rainbow halo up in the sky. These uh, markings in the sky are a little more random. The ones that we saw earlier in the year, I mean, they were very unique. They had personality. It almost looked like um, a very specific craft flew through the sky and, and made these. And that's what we're looking at here, too. They're just not quite as, I don't know if it was windy this day and the clouds were moving around a, a lot quicker, but it's still more activity in the same location. Central Florida, North Central Florida, uh, Southern Florida, our, chip, our friend Chip down in the Everglades. I mean, they are seeing activity in the skies almost on a daily basis, it seems like. I've gotten more videos and photos out of Florida um, probably in the last couple of months than I have in five or six years. It's just incredible, much like these skies that uh, we, we've been looking at today in, in this slideshow that I put together. I used to uh, do slideshows in every video, and I'm going to get back to doing that because i got to get caught up on these photos. Um, that you guys have sent in. They're great, and I want to share them with you guys. They're they're very deserving of, of being shared. You guys do not miss a trick. And I'm telling you, with the, the conception of these smartphones, people are, are sharing more and more unique sky observations from all around the world, as you just saw here in this video. We went to Australia, we went to Singapore and Canada, both hemispheres, the, the north and southern hemispheres, looking at at rare sky phenomena. Good job, guys. Really appreciate it. Looking at the sun, quick update on the GOES X-ray flux. There was almost, there's a large C-class solar flare, but nothing major. M-class solar flare, looking at the Earth-facing side of the sun. For all intents and purposes, it's quiet right now. But from what I understand, there's a couple of large sunspots over here on the, the eastern limb that are turning towards the Earth. They were visible from the Mars rover of all places. The Mars rover could actually see him. So we're gonna see some uh, sunspots showing up probably in about 48 hours. Looking at the Yellowstone supervolcano, uh, the caldera at the mighty supervolcano, pretty quiet. I mean, a little bit of earthquake activity, but we watch this every day. This is one of the, the pulses of the earth that we keep an eye on because if we start to see a lot of activity over here, then we know something's up. But right now, this is what it looks like pretty much on a, any given day. Not too much going on over there. All right, guys, that is all I have for now. Rosa out of Orlando, Florida. Very cool photo. That's the moon surrounded by color. And then you've got some wavy lines in front of the moon that looks like louvers or vents. Very cool photo by Rosa out of Orlando. Guys, we're getting close to the eclipse. 25 days and 14 hours, and the show is on. Got the camera over here to my right, and we are ready for the arrival of the comet, the eclipse. Jupiter in the sky. It's going to look like it's going to have a dragon chasing Jupiter and Venus off to the right. All right, guys, thanks for sharing part of your... Wednesday with me. I'm going to hop off here and call it a day. Thanks for watching. Have a super day and be safe out there.